Okay, everybody, good evening here from Partha in Hyderabad in India. And uh, thanks to Breath Universe Summit. Uh, thanks to Hari that, you know, I get this opportunity to speak about breath, you know, uh, with you all today. The most fundamental aspect of life. Life flowing in us as breath. And uh, sometimes we... We really fail, fail to understand how little we know about this most fundamental aspect of life. I went to uh, a name of the school of breath. And it's all about the breath. Just talk about the breath. 15 years in the corporate, when there was this inner call to go in. And uh, call it destiny. The whole journey has been about the breath. I've been lucky at this time or whatever to spend some good part of the last 10 years with many Himalayan yogis. So that intimate detailing uh, in the breath as an aspect, uh, I would love to share a few things with you today. Uh, let it be a little interactive. Whenever there is a query, you would like to ask something, uh, uh, please go ahead and I'll get back to it. So subjectively, we are probably talking about something like, you know, yoga of the breath. Okay, so yoga of the breath. So first I must define, I take this opportunity today to more or less, you know, defining things because in the last 10, 12 years of the journey that I have seen, um, it, it is at the place of definitions that I've seen people, you know, in spite of coming into meditation, uh, you know, because it's just gone away because they have not just defined things right. So I always start uh, by defining things. So when, since I'm talking about yoga of the breath, so let us define yoga. Okay. So uh, yoga, as you know, literally, we talk about yoga is union. Yoga is the union of two aspects. Okay. Now, union of what? Okay. Basically, you'll see everything is energy. Okay. And... Uh, energy and matter. So it's basically, it's a union of energy and matter. Everywhere you'll see energy and you'll see matter. It's a union of energy and its matter. I'm not using, uh, I'm not saying energy and matter. I'm not saying matter and energy. I'm being very careful in defining it and saying energy and its matter. First comes energy and then the materialization happens. And wherever there's a union, I mean, please make a note of this, wherever there's a union, there is a separation. Okay. Let me give you a small example. The apt example, the food that we eat. The food that we eat, I say it's in a stage of yoga. What is it that we are taking in? We are taking in a matter. Why are we taking this matter in? Because that will give us energy. How can it give us energy? Because energy is already embedded with the matter. So it's in a state of union. Okay. So uh, now what happens? It goes in, it goes into the stomach and now uh, what should happen? Separation must happen. Separation of energy from the matter. Matter will go back to where it came from and energy will be used by the body. So the study of union and separation of energy and matter is the study of yoga. So we, we, we understood yoga in the food aspect. Now let's talk about yoga in the breath. I said each breath that we take is in a state of yoga. So what is it in union with? What is what is the energy aspect of it and what is the the matter aspect of it it's oxygen it's not just oxygen going in along with the oxygen is going in the life force energy which we understand as prana so the prana and the oxygen together is the breath the union now what should happen? The separation. The physical oxygen goes to the physical lungs. Does the physical 
circulation and goes out as carbon dioxide while the subtle prana travels our nadis. So that's how we understand the yoga of the breath, the, the life force energy, the prana and the oxygen together forming our breath. So this is how uh, we must understand yoga. Okay. Coming next, uh, let me define meditation. So many times, you know, we attend so many classes, we listen to so many people. It's always coming to, okay, what is meditation? Hey, come on, we have asked these questions so many a number of times. But I think today, in the context of the breath and common sense, I would like to define a meditation to you all. So, this is one word we have got so many meditation. Why meditate? You know, why meditate at all? What is meditation? What is the purpose of meditation? So, in the context of uh, the breath, I will just say, it's, it's just understand this very common sense aspect. Let's take a situation wherein, uh, let's take a situation wherein the two children born, okay? One is born in a poor family and one in a born in a rich family. Just now, they're born. Do they know their social status? They still do not know their social status. Oh, I'm born in a rich family, I'm born in a poor family. They still don't know. They're not aware of it. The mind is not yet developed uh, with that. Right. So, hmm, uh, what's happening? Let's see what's happening to uh, there where they are, you know. Here, the mother is feeding her own uh, milk to the child. And let's say the, the, the rich rich guy, you know, they bought the latest, um, they imported some milk from uh, Europe, which is high in protein or what, whatsoever, you know. So here, the mother is tying her a sari, a piece of cloth to the, the tree and making it a, a, a kind of a cradle. And here, the guy has bought a golden cradle with diamonds studded in it. It doesn't make a difference to the child whether it's a golden uh, cradle or is it a swing made. Uh, out of a sari or a piece of cloth, both are swinging, both are experiencing uh, the same thing, uh, both are undergoing a royal treatment, both are getting food at the right time, they're getting bathed at the right time, they're getting a massage, they're being pampered, you know, the child does not know the difference at all, both are undergoing a royal treatment. So, what do we understand out of that? It is the breath of the child, which has no mind, which no thought, no goals, no past, no future, nothing in it. The breath of the child is absolutely so clean and so one with the existence that it is receiving all the resources automatically. It is in an auto reception state. It is receiving it all. All the, it doesn't have to ask for it. It doesn't have to cry for it. And uh, uh, it is receiving it all. And we, when we become, you know, adulterated, that's what I call the adulterated breath of a child, is what uh, adult is, unfortunately. So we lose that ability uh, to receive everything automatically because we are not breathing as clean as the child is. The mind has come in. Experiences have come in. Data has come in. Adulteration has come in. Some, we, are, we are sad, we are angry, we are emotional. You know, all these things have come into the breath which was not there of the child. So from a state of auto-reception, we have gone to a state of, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a subtle distance that has happened, there's a subtle separation that has happened the mind has come in and you must have read it so many times that meditation is transcending the mind, transcending the mind and go where? Transcending the mind and go back to that breath, that breath of a child which we were breathing one day, breathing like a child and receiving like a child. Okay, there was a day we were breathing like a child and receiving like a child. So. This is uh, uh, one way of understanding meditation is just to become a child, just to 
touch the frequency of the breath which we were breathing the day we were born that frequency absolutely no mind just there just breathing and attracting all the resources to ourselves okay now that is where i say it's it's common sense is all about i mean a meditation is all about common sense just share common sense just be with the breath okay now dot down any queries that you have that we will uh, uh, catch up a little later so the next thing uh, uh, we we would like to understand is the breath itself you know the the anatomy of breath as we understood that it is oxygen and prana together the union goes in and then there is a separation in, in inside okay let's understand this anatomy of the breath i mean if you can just uh, uh, if you can just you know have an eye for it a vision for what i'm saying you know it's like it's like being like a child right now you know as child when he listens to a story he's able to see everything in the story you know there's a lion there's a tiger there's a forest or water flowing and he's able to see everything literally so just like that whatever i say right now try to have a vision of it okay i call it the anatomy of the breath the in breath the out breath because we're going to talk about today about what is going in and what is going out okay so just just look at this the breath gone in gone in where gone into that space where every frequency of yours is alive awake and kicking you know all aspects you of you is awake in the space the breath is gone in it has touched each and every alive frequency in you and the out breath goes out as if it's a requisition to the existence as if it's a requisition to the universe you know to bring back fulfillment to bring back completion into that space this is what the breath is each and every breath is a communication that is happening with the existence the out breath especially is an emission that is going out of you an emission of going from inside to outside as if it's a requisition to life as to what it has to bring in to you know complete that space okay so let's let's encounter this one interesting question i mean i mean there are some uh, 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 some people so it's basically hello to all uh, right now so specifically i'll go down to the questions if there are any and uh, let's uh, encounter this question uh, uh, called where are you yeah. we'll encounter two questions now where are you and where are you breathing from okay let's take this uh, example of uh, a, a child a, 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 a classroom kind of a situation wherein the math teacher is teaching and uh, the guys playing cricket outside and which you can watch from the window okay so the math teacher is teaching while you seem to be busy with the match that's happening uh, outside in the ground so where are you are you in the class or are you there in the ground what's happening now what is breath got to do this with this question is very uh, interesting to note because the breath the oxygen and the prana together gone in this is the fundamental always remember now where are you while the physical oxygen is working on the body okay the separated prana is always traveling the attention so where are you you are there in the ground you are the whole energy is there in the ground your spirit is there in the ground your presence is there in the ground the separated prana from your breath is absolutely traveling uh, the attention so where are you you are not physically you are there fine but you are always at the point of your attention now this becomes a fundamental aspect a very important aspect in healing also you know when you want to heal a particular part of your body if it needs a certain attention you need to be there as attention as awareness you have to be there pin point there at the point of, of issue that is when your breath is you know the prana from your breath the life force energy from your breath is actually moving towards the point of the issue and healing it okay 
I, I'm not taking much time today, just about 30, 30, 40 minutes, uh, so that going very deeply into it may not be possible uh, today, but then uh, I'm seeding this aspect in you that if the a particular aspect of your body uh, needs attend, I mean healing, be there, just believe. And don't allow anything else to come in at the, that point of time, so that the prana is reaching the point of issue and healing it. So where are you? You are always there at the point of attention. Prana travels the attention. We can do a small exercise on this, you know, I will, uh, I will tell you the exercise, do it at home uh, once the session is over. All you do is just take your right palm, uh, keep the left palm on your lap, keep your right palm and just keep noticing it. Just keep watching your palm. Just very, very detailed manner, in a very, very detailed manner, just keep watching uh, your palm. Little, little details, small, small lines, the shape of the fingers, you know, those little, little aspects that which are there. It's your hand, it's been there with you right from your childhood, you know, but you, you, you've never known, oh, there was a line here, you know, we never have watched it uh, so in such a detailed manner. Watch your palm. Five minutes. Just be with your mom, and slowly you will you will you will experience the buzz that is happening around it. You will sense the blood circulation that's happening around it. You will sense the the auric energy that is around it. You you will sense a certain activity that's happening inside it. It begins to talk. It's like it's begins to talk to you. It, it's relating to you right now. Five minutes, that's all. And you will see, at the end of five minutes, you will very clearly see that the right palm, which you've been, you know, observing, is distinctly different from your left palm. Both are in the same uh, body, but distinctly different. There seems to be, you, you're understanding the activity that's happening here, but there's absolutely no activity here. You relate to there where your attention is. The point of attention begins to respond to you. Okay, so this is a, a very, very important aspect of knowing uh, where are you and energy travels the attention. Okay, so where your attention is, your, your energy is traveling there. It is emphasizing there, good, bad, ugly. Life is nirguna. That means it has, it has no quality of its own. It's not going to differentiate. It's not going to give you more, me, less or things like that. It's absolutely working on the loss. So where you put your attention, you are increasing its aliveness also. The next question I would uh, uh, frame is, where are you breathing from? I mean, this is quite interesting. Where are you uh, breathing from? So, uh, of course, you know, we are breathing from here or, you know, we are breathing from our nose or whatever we say. Uh, please understand uh, that, uh, observe that whenever you are happy, whenever you are happy, your, your body language is different, the glow on your face is different, right? And then you observe that anybody else who is also happy is more or less behaving just like you. You can make out such and such a person is happy because they are, they are projecting it. Okay, and they become very predictable. When you are happy, your behavior is predictable. When anybody else is happy, their behavior is predictable. When you are sad, your behavior is predictable. When you are angry, your behavior is predictable because you are behaving like the feeling. Okay, you, where are you breathing from is the aspect, the oxygen, of course, you are breathing from the, your present surroundings, but where is the pranic energy coming from is from the dimension of your present feelings. That is why you are always behaving like your present feelings. Just think about it. Okay, it's a very, very important fundamental question. Where are you breathing from? Sin is coming from here. But where is the prana coming from? Which dimension is the prana coming from? So if I say there are 10 people in the room, and I say that all the 10 people in this, that single room are breathing from different dimensions, I am right. Because they are all accessing the pranic energy from the dimension of their feelings, which is the vibration, which is their present frequency. Okay, now we've been talking about prana. There's something very interesting I would like to 
you know how do we define prana you know it's very interesting so the small example i would like to uh, define uh, prana to you uh, let's see uh, I, I, let me take the same example which i like the most uh, let us consider that there is a uh, Mm, there's an apple orchard, okay, and there are a lot of apple trees in that, and uh, there are lots of apple in a particular tree. My question is, is there prana in the apple? The answer is, yeah, there is prana, the life force energy is there in the apple. Then I'll say, okay, now I pluck the apple out. I pluck the apple. Now, is there uh, prana in the apple? Uh, the answer is, mm, yeah, maybe. It will deteriorate over a period of time, but yes, there is prana in the apple. And I say, okay, it's been 10 days and it's still there in my, you know, at home. It's gone to the market and came to my house. It's been 10 days, it's been plugged. Is there prana in the apple? I mean, uh, the answer would be like, um, mm, yeah, doubtful. But then it's been deteriorating. Yes, it is there. The whole idea is, please understand, uh, as long as it is in a position to give, you yeah. know, uh, give it taste, the juice, the flavor, as long as it is in a position to uh, give something, it has prana in it, obviously. So now I say, okay, it's fallen down and nobody has taken it, it's got rotten, it's become black in color. Is there prana in the apple? And my answer still would be yes, there's still prana in the apple. There'll still be, you know, those little insects and those little organisms which can still survive on that. And even now, the apple is in a position to give life energy uh, then i'll say okay fine so what's left what's left is just uh, the seed is there prana in the seed somehow at this point of time nobody has a doubt and they say yes there is prana in the seed so what's there in the seed is basically uh, pranic potential life potential what's there in the seed is life potential and uh, this is very interesting i want you to know this have you seen a sunflower seed, you know, uh, you see it's so glossy, you know, and uh, it, it can't, there's, there is life potential in it. Can it grow by itself? It cannot grow by itself. So, uh, uh, what do we need? We need this, you know, we need to earth it. We need to earth it, then we pour water and then the sunlight is there and then it is taken a little space uh, uh, there itself. So. Uh, now the seed begins to sprout actually what goes in can the water go inside that glossy seed no can the nutrients of the uh, earth go into the glossy seed no it can't go in sunlight as light is it there inside no it's all pitch dark inside then what is it that is going in it is the heat from the sunlight it is the heat from the sunlight which goes in and expands from inside and opens up the seed and now the nutrients of the earth now uh, the water can go in and now it, you know it's becoming plant so you see that there was a participation there's a participation of earth of water of sunlight of air and of space it's up by that particular space it's a plant right the participation wherever there is a participation of these five elements there is prana. So prana is nothing but a partnership of these five elements. Very interesting to know. Do think about it. Uh, then another word, uh, let's come to uh, the word uh, called mudras. You know, this is something we have seen different positions that we have taken. We, we must have read so many books on mudras and all that. Okay. Um, some people practice and after some time let go. It's the basic problem of we entering into something and after some time letting it go is because we don't define it well, you know. Uh, what is mudra has got to do with the breath? It's got everything to do with the breath. Okay, please understand. If prana is the car, where is the prana? Prana is that which is, which is in your breath. Prana and oxygen together is your breath. So, it is prana which is giving that life energy into all cells, all organs and uh, that you are. In totality so if prana is the car i say mudra is the steering if any part of your body or anything needs a healing uh, uh, the, the, it just means that it needs prana you know 
So, for example, when people talk about diabetes to me, they say, I do not understand what is diabetes. However, I do understand there is an issue with the pancreas. I understand that, you know, the pancreas are not able to break the, you know, carbohydrates from the food and produce insulin. So, my issue is with the pancreas. Diabetes, I don't understand. The whole idea of this is, they, you know, when you take certain mudra, you are actually giving direction to the pranic flow inside. Okay? Whether it is, you know, uh, uh, migraine, whether it is a thyroid, whether it is hypertension, whether it is diabetes, whether it is, you know, emotional issues or, you know, digestion issues or whether it is reproduction issues or whether it is excretion issues or letting go issues. This whole scenario is along the pranic flow path. So, when prana is not being absorbed by a certain uh, organ, it begins to malfunction, as simple as that. So, when we talk about diabetes, for an example, my whole idea is, my, my attention is, how do I send the prana from my breath to the pancreas? And mudras is that uh, knowing that will help you uh, to take uh, the pranic energy to the specific organ. Okay, let me see, uh, is there any questions over here? Okay. Okay, then we talk about consciousness, you know, consciousness. This is very interesting. How do you define consciousness? Okay. See if it's okay with you, the way I would define consciousness. For me, consciousness is like a radio station, you know, radio station of all different, different frequencies. Okay. Your breath is a frequency. So, the frequency with which you are breathing right now is the station that you are connected right now and you are accessing from there. What is happening to your life or what is happening to our life is basically a, a reflection, a reflection of the frequency we are breathing. You know, the song that is playing in you is exactly what's happening uh, to your life. Okay? Whatever you want in life, Whatever you want in life exists. Please understand. We, we, we try to make our life easier. We want to manifest so many things, you know. And uh, breath is the path to manifest uh, everything because life is flowing in you as breath. Okay. So all that we are holding on to or all that we are letting go uh, is all through the breath, through this bridge called uh, breath. So uh, whatever you want, you know, it exists. How do I say that it exists? It exists as a frequency. You have seen it. Whatever you want is already an image inside you. Just check it down. I want my life to be like this. My home, I want my home to be like this. I want my relations to be like this. This, like this, that which I'm talking about is already an image inside you. You want it like this, right? And you've seen it. You've seen it means there is a permutation and combination in the life aspects that can form it. And what's the huge subject that we are talking about? Life infinite. I mean, how do we, you know, understand this whole infinite aspect? But you see this whole infinite aspect is all about seven things. Light, sound and the five elements. Light, sound and the five elements covers the whole thing, but each one is infinite by in itself. Okay. So, simplify this whole aspect, you will understand it much better. The, the million dollars that you are looking for is an aspect of your breath. Whatever you have received in life till date is because of your breath. It is because of your breath could connect to it. And all that you wanted, you have not yet received in life is because your breath could not connect to it. Simple. Match the frequency and take it. Now, how do we know at what frequency that exists? Is there a scale to it? Okay. I want it like this. How do I know at what frequency it exists? These are all those finer little uh, aspects uh, of the breath. That's why I say it's all in the breath. Whatever you want, you can manifest. It's all in the breath. Okay. So, uh, what, what else uh, uh, is there? Is there a query? Sure. Hello to 
hello again a lot of you is there a specific query somebody can anybody has a specific query we are already 30 minutes here maybe another 10 15 minutes or so is there a specific query that i can address to related to the breath is there a mudra to control diabetes swati mishra yes yes there is a mudra to control not just control diabetes is the mudra to completely come over diabetes now say for example i show you the mudra say for example this is the mudra suppose i say this is the mudra you sit for with the mudra for 10 minutes every day in the morning and watch out in the next one month watch your readings and your diabetes it will be very encouraging you know the state that it is in it will be very encouraging and that encouragement will take you further and two three months down the lane you can come over diabetes okay now the greatest problem would be that uh, you know you will sit down with this for a couple of days the third day the mind will start playing it will it will tell you is it so simple will it really work like that are you wasting your time you understand the mind, when the mind comes in so uh, what i do is in, in mudras i give a whole experience of the mudras you know uh, since we cannot uh, we may not have the time uh, today as such you know but at least know the possibilities uh, that um, you know we can really experience the flow of prana uh, in this very body and when the body experiences it the mind cannot question that which your body will experience physically you've experienced it your uh, uh, mind won't be able to uh, you know play games with you so what will happen is you will not stop the activity in a couple of days. And I say, you please do it for the two weeks, for the three weeks. Hold the mudra. First 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. Sometimes during the day whenever you uh, feel like. But you will not be able to do it because your mind will come and say, hey, what are you doing? It's so simple. You know? That's why I give an experience of the flow you know, that takes about 30-40 minutes. We will ask, we will take some day. Uh, another free session or something and uh, we'll do it for you uh, yes mudra can control diabetes you you want me to show you the mudra i will show it to you this is the mudra this is the mudra all i need from you is the discipline the discipline of not allowing your mind to come in between you be with this mudra three weeks ten minutes in the morning 10 minutes post dinner and see the difference and do send us the feedback on that any other question Niharika so I breathe the whole day and why am I not in the frequency of what I want interesting we all breathe the whole the day and why are you not in the frequency of what you want okay uh, how clear are you about what you want no? Say for example, you, you want a house, okay? you want a house. I ask you, the, the, the four steps of uh, manifesting, you know. Everything begins from a thought. Everything begins with a thought. Now I ask you the question, is there spirit in your thought? Is there passion in your thought? Is there life in your thought? Are you dying for the house that you want? You know. So is there spirit in the thought? Okay. Now, if there is spirit in the thought, if there is passion in the thought, okay, it will go to the second step. The second step is where I call it the Kriya. You know, at the second step, the image of what you want will begin to come in. You know, say, Sunday morning, oh, two bedroom flat will do. Uh, Monday morning, I think I can afford a three bedroom flat. Wednesday morning, how about buying a piece of land and constructing a little house there? Friday morning, something else. Saturday morning, something else. See, your thought has not yet settled down. And one day, one good morning, it will settle down. You'll see the house. This one. And it's not changing again with Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. Clarity has come. Clarity is manifest. Once that second stage has come, the third stage will begin, which I say karma, action. You see how much you have in the bank account how much loan you may have to take or something like that you design your house and you take the permissions and the first step manifest you have the physical house coming in 
Okay, so first and foremost, you must uh, uh, check into that uh, aspect that you know is the thought clear? How clear are you about it? How how high definition are you about it? Okay, uh, I hope I've attended to that. How do I how to connect to the zone of abundance? Wow, such a big question, and. Uh, how to uh, uh, attend to the zone of attendance in one shot today? Okay. <laughs> uh, you must be rich inside. Your inside is your outside. Okay. You must be very rich inside. Let me give you a tip anyways. Okay. If you are a person who can appreciate abundance elsewhere with the other, you know, somebody, somebody gets a lottery, you know, somebody just made five crores. And it made you happy and you could live that happiness in this body, you are becoming the magnet of attracting that towards you. Okay, so please understand, so abundance is something which is in your inside, live that abundance, live that vibration and you will attract uh, abundance to you. But then again I come back to clarity, clarity is manifest in whatever field that you have chosen uh, to. Uh, you know, you must have clarity. More you are clear, more it's high definition with you, the more it is faster coming towards you. Okay, but then I already given you a tip. You know, uh, be happy with the abundance around you. Uh, appreciate abundance everywhere. That keeps that abundance factor inside you alive. In your breath, and your breath will bring it to you. Okay. Don't tell life when it has to bring it to you, how much it has to bring uh, to you, and how much time it has to bring to you. Let it do its work. You be, you keep breathing well inside, and you will die. Huh? Anything else? Any more questions? Visualization also helps. Was that a question, Saroja ji? Visualization also helps. Um, now here, please. Uh, my school teaches me things in a different way. I uh, I'm more about image. I spoke, speak about image, but I don't speak about imagination. The difference is, image forms by itself. Imagination is the mind work that you do on the image. Okay, so do think about it. Do, do communicate with us. We will be in touch uh, to further uh, on on this question. But for now, uh, don't call it a visualization. Uh, I will call it sensing, you know, graduate. It's time to graduate from visualization and imagination to sensing. And the biggest sense is the nose. That which you can smell is closer to you, that which you cannot smell is not yet so close to you. Agreed? The sense of smell. You must be able to smell that, you know. Visualization helps. Call it sensing. Okay, which frequency of breath do I need? Now, the question is how do I understand uh, frequency of breath? Okay, let's learn something today instead of just listening to uh, a lecture kind of a thing. Okay, this is your takeaway today. Okay, how do I connect to the frequency of that which I want? Correct? There's no scale, there's no barometers. How do I uh, connect to that frequency? Okay, so tell you, this is your take on that which you, which you want, that I said exists, it exists in a certain frequency. Okay, check your breath now. This is how you're breathing, right? Just think for a moment, that which you want has happened. It's just happened. If it has just happened, what will happen to your breath? You will have a sigh of relief. You will have a breath of relief. You will have a breath of joy. And I just say, it's not imagination. Just live those first five minutes. That which you want. It has just happened. What will happen to the five minutes? Your breath will change. Your frequency will change. You'll breathe in a certain way. Identify with the breath. 
David that breath. That breath is the frequency. You're living a futuristic possibility in the now. What are you doing? You are bringing it closer to you now. If that was clear to you. Yes? Any other question? Niharika ji, yes, I understand. It's good. Okay. Any other questions, please uh, do come in so that, you know, I can be of uh, some help here. Okay. So, uh, well, I, I think 40 minutes on, 